Right, how oh, are we YouTube? Uh, what I have here um, is a template for one of the covers that's going to go to cover the electric. So I'm just going to take you through how I go about doing this. So I um, have some aluminium here, 2 mil. So we're going to make up this template here, mark it out or cut it on the guillotine here. So. What I'm going to do with this, I want to add 10 mil to this end here, so I can fold it up. The, these lines will be our folds. So, uh, right, so let's get started then. So we'll get our 10 mil first. Ten mil. So what we can do now is start marking up the rest of it. We'll go this way because this is not cut square. Is it square this side? Yes, it's square that side. So we'll put a mark there. Mark here. Basically, I'm just marking where all the folds are. Yes, I know this bit across the end here is not straight. There's a reason for that. The subframe uh, is a little off square. So, um, I just have that piece made like that so it'll look straight when you're looking at it. Uh, first time to put subframe on a bike, so not not particularly uh, easy, I have to say. But the main thing is to have all your bits that mount onto the subframe that they're straight. So Okay, so this piece here is where it'll mount onto one part, so we have it mocked up like this, so it'll mount that way, I'll show you all that when we have it done. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get our, we've got those. Get our uh, lines where we need to have them. So let's see how far back is that? It's 15 mil back from here. Oh, it should be square. So 15 plus 10 is 25, no it's not, 15, yeah, plus 10, 25, brain isn't working today, doesn't work most days funny enough. Right, 
right so what will happen here is that bit there um, we won't cut that off what we'll do is we'll we cut all this on the bandsaw I can tell you for why what's that in these here That's all waste. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, particularly when you're making something like this, where you're going to be folding up the corners, you can see here where these lines intersect. You want to get rid of those pieces there and give it a nice, fairly wide cut uh, with the blade so that when this is folded up, when where it meets at the corners, so there's one corner that you have a little gap like this it's just easier for when you're forming it together and it looks neater I think now the main reason for the edges is for strength it'll make the panel an awful lot stronger than it would be if you didn't have them so that's basically our template marked out you know and the beauty of working with cardboard is that you can add a bit on you can take a bit off um you know it's it's much easier than the older hard way of doing things of trying to measure it out and mark it out on this on the on the finished material so you know you're not wasting material that way if you cock it up and get it wrong so uh, what we'll do now is we'll just slice this off here with the guillotine and then we can go to the bandsaw. Taking off all the excess, but I'm leaving a bit extra on it. Reason being that when you're cutting on a guillotine like this, you want to be able to see what you're at. Take another piece in off that now. work close to your lines but leave a little bit of material there that you can you know finish it by file so we'll go over to the bandsaw now and cut this now
going to cut down here, just here and here, because we need to bend that piece up. step is I suppose we're going to um, we're going to bend it so uh, we go over to the vise now and get set up for that now if I was uh, if I was fancy I'd have a break and I keep meaning to make one for phone and steam this is how I've been doing it for years a couple of lengths of this in the vice like that so we so all we're looking for is that the line is uh, correct with this front one because that's where the bending is going to occur clamp rope wooden tight Over malice. There's our first bend. Now these ones are a little trickier because we're we're only going to be working with this shorter distance. So I have two shorter pieces there, so we'll set up for that now in a minute. The strength that this adds to your part is unreal. You know, the natural temptation would be to get a ball peen hammer and start whacking that, but uh, you don't want to do that. It leaves awful marks on your Material. At least they're over a mallet. Won't mark it. Okay, so there's our two sides. You can feel it there already, that's really strong. Like this is two mil material, it's way overkill for what I'm doing. But As I always say, you're better to be looking at it than looking for it. I always tend to over, over engineer things. Now, what we're going to do is we're only going to bend, let's see, I'm trying to think here now. This is awkward now. It's very awkward. I probably should have bent them first. Okay. I have a think for that. I'm going to have to bend the whole lot. That's I have no choice. I can straighten that back when I uh, the piece in the centre. I'd straighten that back out. Because I'm probably going to end up cutting some of that off anyway. See the way that little piece bent there, so what we're going to do now is we're going to straighten that out. Right, we're going to have to do this the old school way. Mm. 
a little piece at a time. Put that in there like that. It's just a piece of hard material. Clamp it up in the vise. Like that. Now we need a little piece of wood. So, now we need to straighten that back out. Just clamping it like this to hold it. them out like that, clamp it close, okay, now that won't fit in the vise to bend the way I want it to bend, so I'm just straighten that. So what we'll do is uh, we have another way of doing this. So we'll just swing you around here. Get a couple of clamps now. I'm not that strong. The whole thing's moving, but I'm just following it, so it makes no difference. A few little marks there, but that's from the pliers. What can you do? Right, so I'm gonna have a test fit now.
see the idea of this is to hide uh, all the electrics okay so that's a pretty decent fit another bend to do across the the end here I just do that quickly here in the vise Bent it down like that. So that will go there like that. Kind of um, little tray. This piece will go above it here. This is for the uh, the seat. Uh, the front part of the seat that's got the hook on it, uh, it mounts in here. I kind of figured it should make it removable because if I ever need to get in here the electrics. This is to cover all the majority of the. Sorry now, the vast majority of all the connectors, the electrics and stuff, is going to go down in here. This trough, as I call it, and then we'll have the CDI, the M unit, will mount here. There's even enough real estate up under the battery back there for a mega squirt uh, if I ever fuel inject this thing. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll go back to the vise. We'll just do a little bit of finishing work on this just to neaten it up. And I uh, need to tidy up this here. This is a bit, a little bit off, but what can you do? It's just the way it is when you're working. So you see what I mean there at the corner, you have that little gap. Just makes uh, putting it all together a bit easier. So you can take off the plastic now, I guess. So that's kind of your finished piece. And uh, we'll tidy all that up now. And so we we'll go back to the vise. So I'm just looking at the, uh, the timer on the camera there. We're at 26 minutes now, and that's what includes moving the moving the camera around and all that stuff. So, um, I suppose where's my little bar gone? In real time, um, if I was doing this without camera, I'd. Uh, Probably have it done in about 10 or 15 minutes. Now you could make this out of 1 mil or 1.5 and it'll be plenty strong enough for, for what I'm going to do with it. So um, we've loads of the 2 mil here. I got a quarter sheet off Declan and the boys. So uh, that's what it is. Now we're going to. Just lightly work this here. The more trick is don't murder it with the hammer. and straight and what we'll do is we'll give it all a rub of a scotch brake because I'm going to get these uh, these will be powder coated anyway so um, so what we need to do now is we're just going to knock all the corners off with the file so as it's uh, no sharp edges you know you don't need to go crazy with that Thank you. 
need to do is just give it a little rub diagonally like this. You can see there the mistake I made now with this back piece. I should have measured that uh, 12 mil instead of 10. I didn't allow for the bend. But that's okay, where that's going, it's not going to be seen, so. Now you know, like a guy that was doing professional type work, he'd probably spend half a day making something like this. But this is just basic, basic hand tools that most of would have in your sheds. Right, another corner there. File the corner off. Into a 45 like that. And then just. I could go over this with a finer file later on. But you're just knocking the corner off. Uh, what we'll do with uh, these here is we'll just chop them off. Uh, we'll mark that up and chop them off with the, the guillotine. So I just want to go back to the bike now and um, mark this for cutting and uh, where the holes have to go on it for it to mount in. So we'll go back over here. mark my aluminium with a pencil rather than scribing it I'm going to take this off out of the way I just put that there to the idea of this little tray here is that I'll be able to get a basic tool kit in there a few allen keys and bits like that Oh, that's actually quite cool. We don't need to. We won't need to cut that at all. So what we'll do now is we, what we'll do is sticking out a little along here. But when we bolt it in, it's going to find its own its own uh, way. Okay. So I'll show you now. Uh, little trick I was showed years ago doing something like this uh, if I can find this here we are you get yourself your mask and tape or whatever tear yourself off a piece stick it where you're interested in getting your datums from shove the pencil along your edges where your holes are okay so we take off a piece of tape
you end up with this. So you can stick that onto your workpiece and transfer your data. What we're doing now is we punch our center punch our two holes and drill it. And then we can mount it on the bike and we'll just work these two corners here. So it's just a simple little trick I was showed years ago. By someone in my family that's sadly no longer with us. these now we get a drill drill is a pilot board first That moved on me a little bit, but no matter. So what we we'll do to counteract that? Normally for an M6, the drill the holes. Uh, 0.5 so what we'll do is we'll go to 7.5 that will give us a bit of wiggle room clean up these burrs on the back Like I said, this is quick and dirty. You could spend hours upon hours making a piece like this. But to be honest, something like this doesn't deserve that amount of time. I'm just going to break the corners here. Spend a lot of time getting all this stuff prepared before it gets uh, powder coated. Like you can come along with a deburring tool, you know. That makes the world of difference to something like this. Just clean all your edges. You know, well anyhow, you get the idea. Perfect. Oh, we need a couple of 
couple of washers. Excuse me now because I have no M6 washers at the minute. I won't get some. Oh, there's the rain. Block next door is out painting. Just gonna put a stop to his gallop. itself in there where it needs to be. And what we'll do is we'll probably make some sort of a mount here at the front. Like it actually if you just put some rubber under that it'll be probably okay. That's your little tray then. And this will be above it. You know, so you get a small tool kit in there. A few Allen keys, maybe little long nose pliers, screwdriver, you know, and then ones where you can have Phillips or flathead. You know, just some tools in case you do ever stop on the side of the road you can have a go at trying to get yourself going again so basically that's the way I template stuff and make it and you can see here I have a bigger one now in the back to make but it'll be the same process and uh, this is uh, and like all, you have all this room under here the way this sits in there there's about 10 or 15 mil under it so you have enough room to run wires so the way it'll be is where the M unit will sit here, there'll be a slot cut this side and a slot cut this side for the wires and same for the CDI. So everything will just drop down underneath and when you lift the seat or whatever to show somebody, it could be super neat. So there you go. That's, uh, that's how I run it anyway. So I hope you found that useful. And uh, might encourage you to try making some stuff of your own. So we'll leave it there for this video. And uh, we'll get you again in the next one. Peace.